this video, we're going to be going over what I thought was the best matchup of the first day of the Madden 25 kickoff challenge. This is Showtime 757 against Abram. Abram, obviously uh, one of the best Madden players in the world, came on the scene kind of last year. Showtime, kind of a relatively, like people know about him, but uh, this is his first live event. And I think Showtime, I want to say, is only 16 years old uh, at this event. So he beat Skimbo to get here. So obviously, you know, beat a good, really good player, beat one of the best Madden players of all time to get to the live event. And uh, from what I understand, Showtime might have the best switch stick in all of Madden 25. So it's going to be a great video to kind of study the switch stick. Um, and then Abram, obviously, one of probably the top, you know, at least top 10, if not top five over the last uh, year. So let's go ahead and get into this. And Abram, I think uh, Abram and John, probably the two players that made, I think, the first two events of the game. So here, kind of a, a weird play uh, to start off. Let's go ahead and get into the second and 10. Now, Abram is in the Colts playbook. And I got to be honest, uh, I think the main reason that he's running Colts is for an auto motion play uh, with this tight end here. So he'll have the little auto motion play with this tight end. We'll kind of do a little cheap motion. Uh, really, really good play here. And uh, starting out going the speed out. And I got to be honest, you know, Abram, one of the only players I've seen this year running Colts, but he does have this like kind of some cheap motion plays out of this, has duo, has Seattle, uh, which a lot of them don't have Seattle. They have a, a different a different type of play, I think Durham. But um, I might have to check out Colts myself uh, because I love Bunch Strong Offset. So, yeah, you see some of the motion plays that he has access to within this one that you don't have in a book like um, Bears, for example. But he still has Flood, uh, which Flood is really, really effective. So here it is. Here's that cheap motion. Okay. Watch how this cheap motion kind of just darts out. Quick read here. Gets a cross man. Hits that crosser and uh, going to get out pretty quick. Now, uh, Abram is going to be running a lot of man-to-man -man on defense. Showtime, however, is going to be in this double mug defense, right? Obviously, best defense in the game right now. We have a full ebook on that in our school community. But Abram is going to run more man. Showtime is going to be running a lot more zone. And, um, and we'll kind of see kind of how this looks out here. So, you know, we got a little high-low. We got the speed out. Again, look at the switch stick. He's instantly – I mean, he switch sticks every pretty much everywhere every play so a lot of this like cover to roll coverage and then we're just switch sticking to to death really so you see switch stick switch stick not able to get out there for that out route good read by abram takes a nice little easy read and gonna set up a goal line situation now one of the most important things to learn from these videos is what these guys are going to be doing down in the red zone because it is the hardest place uh, to score this red zone inside about the 10 yard line really inside the five the five and in is probably the hardest place to score in the game especially if you can stop the run so showtime coming out six one base align press got a little toss from abram and that was a very very easy uh, opening drive from abram all right so back here and we got showtime's first possession and um Started playing Madden, Madden 23. I know he played before that, but I think Madden 23 might have been like his first year, like really, you know, kind of getting pretty decent at the game. But Showtime's one of those guys, one of those great stories of somebody that, you know, kind of came up. I want to say Madden 20, Madden 21, and uh, just wasn't a really good player. It was honestly an easy win. And then, you know, kind of went through and just playing competitively, uh, learning from the best players in the world, obviously putting his own spin on some things, ends up, you know, going from, you know, zero to one of the best players in the world over the course of a couple of years of just playing and playing and playing and playing. He was actually at the RHG event last year and actually beat John Beast in that event. So he's definitely battle tested and definitely has won some big games. He's going to run a lot of wide curl uh, here on his left hand side. Uh, also, you want to look at these pass protection because, again, both these guys in double mug. Abram is running the normal nickel double mug. You can tell because these guys are on the line of scrimmage. So it's basically just a pinch D-line, and we're going to slant inside and try to get pressure with these four. And then as you start to pick up this four-man, then we can occasionally send both edges off of the edge. Now, the thing that Abram's going to be doing, because Showtime runs a lot of this uh, Y curl, this is really good against cover three-based defenses, cover two-based defenses. So he's going to be running a lot of man-to-man. -man. You're going to see Abram run a lot of man-to-man -man here um, in this game. You see manned up, manned up right and and really trying to limit y curl basically here we see a d line pick six early in the game and i talk about this a lot um but one of the most important principles that i could give you about defense in madden 
And I don't care if it's Madden 25, Madden 24, Madden 23. You really want to be running to be effective competitively. I think almost unanimously, you want to be in a defense. And the name of the game is pressure. Pressure. You've got to send pressure. Four, five, or six-man pressures. That is what you want to be. If you can get pressure to any three, great. But generally, it's going to be a send four, a send five, a send six. That time it was a send five. And Abram obviously kind of sending five there situationally because he's obviously anticipating, you know, Showtime setting up some protection. Once you start sending five, sending six, it makes this four man significantly better. Again, once they start to slide and do stuff like that to try to pick up the four man, that's where sending these five and sending six. And there you see Screamer against blocked running back. And I believe this game was actually played on the latest patch as well. So you see kind of what we're getting into. Again, this is a super big point, and it is why every single effective defense that we've seen up to this point is pretty much double mug or dollar, all right? If you're playing bunch, pretty much unanimously you're going to be in double mug. If you're playing trips, wide U off, uh, U trips, stuff like that, occasionally you'll see more dollar. We did see some cub in this game, uh, in this tournament as well. Here's a little cheat motion. I believe Showtime is in the Falcons book on offense. So Showtime is in ATL, and Abram is in a Arizona. And then uh, you see here regular double mug, right? And then um, Showtime is going to be in 2-4. In so you see here there's a four-man, boom. And that why is that happening? A lot of that, the reason why this pressure is occurring is because Showtime is setting up protection. When you start sliding your line to pick up a four-man blitz, it messes up the targeting a lot of times, and a lot of times just a basic pass rush all of a sudden can become Zeus just because of the fact that you've kind of been adjusting your offensive line a lot. So here, a big 4th and 18. This is a huge 4th and 18, and Showtime completes this, and this is honestly probably the play of the game up to this point. So Abram is absolutely on his neck. This is Showtime's first tournament. This is the route combination that we get here. This is out of verticals. I really don't understand the purpose of the curl here. I would be a little bit more okay if we saw a speed out. Um, I just don't understand the purpose of the curl. And then the wheel is what it is. It's probably the main reason for the wheel is uh, to try to attack the man coverage shading that Abram was probably doing. I'm just not 100% sure why we run a curl there. But basically, literally, the read is seam streak. So we're looking here. If that's covered... We're looking for this coming underneath of it. That's it's all we're doing. And look at this. Look at this. We send one, two, three, four. Um, so essentially what you're doing is a send three with a contain to prevent the rollout so that he can't extend the play. And then basically all Abram has to do is go stand right here. Watch his user. He switched sticks. Now at this point, I'm not sure why he switched sticks. Probably to try to take away the seam streak. And that just it honestly kind of messes him up. The switch stick actually makes it more open because what happens is, and again, this is where the out route would be much more effective. He has to kind of respect the streak. And this just gets in this really, really tight window possession, catch everything this year. It's so good. And it was just like one of those broken plays gets a first down. And honestly, like you see him take a deep breath because had he not gotten that first down, that might have been GG's. Like, the game might have ended right there, like 21-0. Hard to come back from that in this year's game. You know, hard to come back down any year, but especially this year. So, anyway, just kind of interesting. Again, you're starting to kind of see how they're going to be playing the game. You're going to get a lot of uh, blitzing from Abram. Really important to kind of look at what he's doing defensively. He's not sending the four every time. He's mixing it up. So, here again, you see that send three with a contain. That's one of his major uh, mainstay setups. Here we get a shaded down man look with a half here, a half here, and then basically, essentially, it's two men under. If you think about it, it's practically two men under, and he's just using the running back because he knows the running back's going to block a lot. This is why pressure is important because when you can consistently – get pressure and force your opponent to have to block a running back. Now that opens up a ton of options for you coverage wise. Now you only have to have cover four receivers as opposed to covering three. And he's sending this a lot. This contain again. Um, this time we see a man up here, man up here. He's kind of lurking over here. That could have very easily been an interception. And honestly, like that was just kind of a weird read. 
And Showtime is notorious for really not being that good of a passer um, and kind of just essentially – finding ways to get down the field without really having a ton of like great passing combos. Um, but here, that was actually a really nice combo right there. A little smash return. This is a combo you want to steal. This is, if you're looking for a combo to lurk, this is actually one of the better ones. Um, what I, I'd probably do something slightly different with this. This is something I've been doing a lot late, recently, but this tight end streak clears out really well for this backside end. put that about 15 yards and then you basically just have like a high low. Now, what I would probably do here is I'd actually drag my tight end, streak this guy, boom, like this. But you see Showtime has a corner route here. So I'm not sure the whole purpose of the corner, but probably just trying to beat man coverage basically. And he thinks the corner might give him a better shot here. And it does open this space up a lot for that circle receiver to get open. Jukes breaks 15 tackles, gets down to about the 20, a five-yard gain, turns into about a 15-yard gain because of tackling. Go back to Y curl, a lot of Y curl, using these wheels. This, uh, these wheels and streaks really good against cover three. Not the greatest against man, um, which is why you see Abram running a lot of man. Hits the drag, check down right there. I feel like Abram... Yeah, I mean, I guess you have to use the running back, so that's kind of why he, he covered that the way he did. Anyway, so now we get down here and we start looking at red zone. So, uh, again, about about 10 and in, 6, 5-yard line in, you know, tight wild flex stretch. We'll see this wide zone, I think, from tight wild flex. And gets out of there really easily. So we're going to be putting that in the notes. <laughs> if you have tight wild flex, audible in a wide zone out a bunch or just come out in it. And uh, that could be a really, really good red zone play for you. So that's a big touchdown for Showtime. Like, that's like a huge deal because had Abram got to stop there, a lot, lot of things really um, kind of closed down in terms of the way Showtime can get back in this game. Him getting seven there really just keeps him alive in the game. And now Abram gets a, gets a chance to go back up two scores and kind of put him in the same situation. But this gives Showtime a chance to play good defense, get a stop. And if Showtime gets a stop here, it could really get – you know, get things back because Showtime does get the ball uh, to start the second half. So that's also why, and there you see the crack toss, super good. If you take nothing else away from the video, bunch strong offset, halfback crack toss, really good against the double mug. Also, um, one of the things I wanted to say here is that, you know, Showtime gets ball at half. And so if he gets a stop here, gets back to 14-14, that's a huge deal. It's why it's so important to be, uh, and there you see there's that pressure again. That's a blocked running back, doesn't do anything, uh, as you see. I mean, he, he, you know, this, this is why you run double mug. This right here is why you run it. Look at this. Watch this. It's a send four. It's a standard send four. This running back kicks out so far. If this guy's fast enough, he can get there before the running back can block him. And even if the running back blocks him, here you see he chips him. This is an almost automatic win right to the quarterback. What can you throw here? You know, what can you really realistically throw? He's actually, I think he tries to, or no, he does just take a sack. And that's a 10-yard loss as well. So you kind of see, like, the, the reason and the rationale why pressure is so significant um, and, and why every good defense ever has really been centered around a blitz. Now this time, um, Abram just, or uh, Showtime just sent four. Now he's going to send six, I believe here. Or, yep, send six. So now uh, Abram's doing pass pro. And this messes up. This is why that you send six every now and then. This messes this pass pro up. And now look at this. Now you get a throwaway, and now you're on a third and 20. I will say this is one of the most offensive, high-powered offensive years we've seen in recent memory. Third and 20 is not easy to convert. Fourth and 20 is not easy to convert in this year's game just because switch stick, honestly, um, and, and because of how the pressure works here So out of this defense. Here, uh, Showtime gets clicked onto the safety, unfortunately, and this just really opens up the field for Abram. He throws that, and that's honestly and, – and one of the things real quick here, Showtime, um, a lot of people say you – so he switches off of a blitz player. The way you do that is he hits uh, B or circle and points the left stick to the player he wants. So in this case, it's this defender – once he's on him, he can switch stick like normal, and he could have cut this off here. Obviously, he's trying to use her this crosser, and um, this this. Oh, uh, <laughs> that does not look open. But so far, you kind of seeing like you know, and really what what got him the stop? What's going to get him the stop here? It's fourth and twenty. 
really hard to convert a fourth and 20 in this game. Obviously, Showtime converted a fourth and 18, and that in and of itself you saw kind of fluky. Here again, blocked running back. This time you get to send five. Notice that he's sending six. He's sending four. He's sending five. Now you get to send five. This guy comes right through. Rocked running back. Yes, it does block it for a second. Now Abrams got to get out of here, rolled out. He actually is able to get out here. Problem is, I think he runs verts with like a either an out or just a straight up fade. And let's see what he ends up doing. There's the speed out, and he actually talks that. That's insane. Oh man, this game is so hard to play defense. Look at this. I mean, he's is, and I think what happens is he's switching to the crosser because he thinks this is a streak. And you see the speed out. I think that's like a 25 yard speed out. Amazing, you know. So they both have kind of gotten a. A fourth and long that, you know, didn't really look that good, didn't look that clean, uh, but fourth and longs rarely look that clean. Also, you're seeing just the importance of the pressure, the importance of the pressure in this game. Here we go, a little high-low bench read. Ooh, what a play. That's amazing switch stick. Okay, so um, Abram ran this play on the first drive, and Showtime recognizes what he's doing. So, like, right here, watch. He switch sticks here. Pretty, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Let's back that up. So, okay. So he switch sticks. He switch sticks here, and he's going to drive on this out. But this is a third, so when he releases him, he'll release him to go back up and play this corner. Okay? So this is a great, great job of switch stick. So here he takes this away. Now, last in the first drive, Abram just threw this. But he doesn't here. Um, and then what's interesting is this throw. So... Showtime acts like he's going to drive on this corner, but he doesn't have to because, as you see, this third is baiting back to go guard the corner. So then what he's able to do is he's here. He fakes like he's going here, and then he reads the field perfectly right back into the robber area, and he takes it away. That's a really good switch stick. And also that guy was on a middle third, so he did see him sl switch to that outside corner slightly for a second. Switch back to it. Amazing defensive play right upon the heels of a fourth and 20 completion. And honestly, the open read was the out route that Abram threw on the first drive. I think he might have anticipated Showtime driving on that a little bit harder than Showtime actually did. And um, it's a bang-bang play, tight windows, and able to, uh, able to get probably the best pick we've seen so far in the tournament. Uh, that was a really, really, really good play. All right, so Showtime now gives him himself an opportunity to get back in the game, and basically, like almost like that first stop that never happened, he can go back down, tie the game. He can even do that with taking all the clock as well. Um, this is not too difficult to clock this out. We'll see if he does start managing the clock. He is kind of just playing regular offense at this point. Throws that drag route. I'd like to see him go down right there, get a second of one situation. Then he's able to clock it. Didn't do that. Um, Showtime does play kind of different. He plays a lot more aggressive. Um, you know, he play. He, he, he really, you know, just kind of like throws it in here. Now, all of a sudden, we randomly start clocking. It's kind of interesting. If he, he made that a second and one, you get an extra down the clock. But I don't think it's that big of a deal. Again, the biggest thing that probably is going through his head is, is if he can clock this out and go in half 14-14, he gets ball at halftime. So um, that's a big deal. Here's a standard smash return setup. Good user by Abram. Kind of a broken play. Ends up just taking a sack. I actually like that sack because you keep the clock moving. Look at Abram's timeouts. He only has one left. Third down and 12 situation. It's a big down in the game. And um, he's going to Y curl. I love seeing this. So one of his adjustments to man, and I've been talking about this since college football 25, these like 10 to 15 yard ends stemmed over the middle of the field, really good against man coverage, put a drag underneath of that. And this is a true like shallow cross type of route where you're getting that high low between that in route and that drag route. It's really hard to use for that. Um, and the zones drift so bad, the drags are always open. You see, look at this drag route, really nice. Ends up throwing that. Ooh, okay. And honestly, I don't love that he, th he scored there. Um, I actually think he should have went down. I guess you take the touchdown is probably his thought. But um, you give Abram the ball with a minute 30. Don't love that decision by him. 
But I think basically the hard flat, it was a hard flat over there, and the wheel just outran it and got home for the pressure. You see here, he switch sticks off this. This is a hard flat. Good read by Showtime. And then, a, honestly, a terrible throw. Had to add back to it. Kind of sloppy, but does get it done. Here's that cheap motion. Watch that tight end. See how he has a quick snap ability to be thrown. Speed out. Really nice dot. Close, close throw, but open. But honestly, was open. And let's see here. Let's take a look at Showtime. There's that quick crack toss. Didn't work as well this time. Second 13. Again, the biggest thing here from Abram is if even if he gets three, he's in good shape. Um, he just can't give the ball back to Showtime. Out route. Ooh, look at this blitz. This is what I'm saying, boys. This is a blocked running back. He sends four at a block at a six man pass, bro. This guy comes straight in. That is that is why you that is why this defense is being ran at the highest level. Pretty much every single player that I've seen make these events are running this defense, and they might run dollar against trips. But it, this is the main defense against the main offense, uh, bunch versus double mug. And you're seeing why. You're seeing the pressure. The pressure is the key uh, to the defense. We actually have a full ebook on this. We also have a full ebook on bunch uh, on this bunch strong offset. Not this specific one, but the one out of Bears. And you can check that out again at the school community. Link is in the description below. Little wheel route, corner route, everything's open, but instead we throw a covered player. I hate this. I don't like I guess I guess what you're saying is like I'm anticipating him switching here, but man, like let's throw this corner route and I don't feel like this is more open. I mean, this is I mean, you see switches right here. Gosh, I just feel like this is more open over here. And again, I know it's hard to do all this in a second, but that's a fourth and thirteen, and that's another kind of shaky completion. I mean, kind of shaky completion. Completion. Abram obviously sees that, realizes that, goes to the crack toss, get outside, doesn't get outside. It's kind of that animation, that that running back uh, animation on that play is kind of sluggish, kind of slow. Uh, that run is good against Double Mug, but it's not. Uh, as you see, it's not like amazing. Um, another a gap pressure. Get that seam wheel. Love that throw. Now we're sitting in a third and three. And, again, the biggest goal here is we don't want to give the ball back to Showtime. So even if we take a field goal, it's honestly fine um, in terms of things. Now he runs – I will say Abram runs a lot of this bunch wide flex. Like you're seeing him run that a lot. Going speed dig, kind of an interesting combo. I honestly don't love the streak. And there you go. And he tries to go down. He's not able to. So he tries to go down. Not able to go down. Puts us in an interesting spot. All right, so 21-14. Now, kind of honestly, like you saw, Abram did try to go down. The reason being is because if Showtime gets three, then he can actually come out and take the lead after half. And so for Showtime here, the biggest thing is we're trying to get three. Uh, and so it, you're gonna, he does have all of his timeouts. This is a fairly easy situation to be able to get three you're kind of honestly playing offense fairly normally uh fairly standard offensive drive here from um from from um showtime here shaded down man that tiny wheel cooks it able to get out of there with the duke breaks about 500 tackles breaks another tackle and uh and gets out of bounds to boot and so this should be basically your field goal uh abram obviously beside himself we'll see does he just take a three Honestly, you might take one shot, but you probably I, – I mean, you don't want to be too aggressive here. Like, get your field goal. Feel good about getting the lead at halftime based off the first half. You really should not be – you know, Abram just – I mean, honestly, like, Abram should have been winning by a lot more. Uh, out route to the right, out route to the left. He throws that. He catches that. And we got a tie ball game. Now, this is, this is what I'm talking about with these out routes. Again, a lot of people running corners and posts. You might consider running these out routes. Even this one is about a 15-yard out route. We're just trying to hit the, hit the pylon, 15-yard-ish out route. Throw this. Watch this right on the cut. There's nothing over here to help. And, and it, the funny thing is this is way more covered than this one, but both of these routes are wide open, and this is just simple man-beating we're putting man-beating routes on the field. Abrams playing man coverage. And you get a nice ag back to the ball for a touchdown. And that is going to be the half. 
All right, second half here, and starting out, Showtime does get the ball to start out. And we get that, I think, was that an out route? Let me see if that was an out route. Watch this, watch this R1. I'm, I'm almost positive. Yep, that's 100% an out route to the sideline, trying to beat man coverage. It does beat man coverage. I get a little bit more up the field. I'd like to see this round a little flatter. Um, the throw was a little, in my opinion, poor, and uh, you get kind of an underthrow because you try to, try to throw it too far up the field. All right, second and 10 situation. Um, double mug look again. Look at these pass pros, and you're just going to see a little mesh, good reads. And now you're going to start to see Showtime is really going to start going a little bit away from wide curl, which was his main power play. And now you're going to start to see him call a little bit more trail, a little bit more just basic man-beating stuff from bunch. Um, here we get a short side bunch. I feel like Showtime, for the most part, is running his bunch to the, to the right. A um, little beat press animation, running back, good read. And there you see that's what I'm talking about. I, I love seeing the 10-yard. Like, I actually am a huge fan of 10 to 15-yard in routes stemmed. I feel like they just get into a really, really difficult part of the field, the user. Um, we'll see kind of what ends up coming. Here's a standard smash return setup. Um, I don't know what we're doing here. We got two post routes. I don't love that combo. There's that. This is wide open. Right now, you throw it right now. Throw that right now. Good job. Take your easy read. That's second and inches. Again, bunch to the right. Got this running back, running back, running back. Oh, we throw that. We catch that. I don't know about that. Ah, these wheel routes, man. Again, shaded down, man. These wheel routes cook, man. They, you can just put them in and just catch – you catch so much in traffic this year. Here's White Crow again with that setup going back to that. I love this combo. I actually love this combo. He might spam this the entire game. Running back's open. If that if he ever gets time, that running back's a touchdown. If he ever gets enough time. Now here's a post route from Worthy. He's been running a lot of in routes. Now we're going to see a post. And watch this post. This post just fries man coverage. Now, uh, what I would assume that Abram was doing is because – uh, of the out route that was thrown at halftime. I think Abram had, at this point, been shading that solo wide receiver outside or even putting a zone out there, probably just shading outside. And that post just absolutely cooked over the middle of the field. It was really nice, uh, really, really, really nice route. Yeah, I want to say that's just shaded out main coverage and um, able just to kind of have a, a good man-beating route. There we go. There we go. Good reads. Watch Showtime switch stick on this. He's going to really start to switch stuff now that he's kind of getting kind of getting a good feel um, for what Abram wants to do offensively. You're going to start to see some really, really good switch sticking. So, and it's going to really make things difficult on him offensively. Um, screamer right up the middle. That's why he's in double mug. I believe that was just – and this is, this is blocked running back. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. Got two free. That's why you send double mug. That's why double mug right now is the best defense. That's why we have an ebook on it. That's why you need to be in it. It's the defense that gives you the best chance to consistently get a stop in this game. Let's see what we have here. Bunch trail. Love this combo. This is one of my favorite combos that I've seen so far. We got a short corner. We have a drag that's going to turn this into a high low over here. I love the speed outs here. And we're going to have a little trail route. Now, this is in the middle of the field, so this out route will have a little bit more room to work as well. But what we'll see. We get screamed at, corner route. He's Yeah, he's he's really not been throwing a lot of corner routes. Um, got kind of a bad – I don't know what happened there. but And now he's on another fourth down. I mean, golly. I think the reason why you're not seeing him really throw corner routes as much is because Showtime – He's kind of respecting Showtime switch sticks. Showtime is really good at switching switch sticking corners. Um, here you got Vern. So I just feel like you can throw that. Let's see if he does. He is going to throw it. That's a possession catch. I mean, you see about 80% of the time they're basically possession catching. Both team, both uh, players are basically possession catching a, a significant amount of the time. So uh, that being said, you can go just to basic verticals with the drag. Nothing really there. He goes to this a lot. I, I, I haven't really seen this formation be ran a ton. Um, there's that out route. I actually love this combo, though. He really, and really, we're just picking on this corner, basically. I don't know what the seam streak's for, but 
But that's a good combo. I like that out of Bunch Flex. And I think the, the unique thing you get out of Bunch Flex that he's doing is you can speed out that outside guy because technically he's an outside receiver. He's not a slot receiver. Whereas in regular Bunch, he's a slot receiver. Here's another good setup at a dig return again. So first read here, we're really looking at this little pop pass right here. Now he does have this, but this is a hard throw. We're also then going to come back over here, look to this tight end. I just, he's putting, what he's doing is he's horizontally stretching a lot. Um, here gets, gets um, screamed at again. And you're seeing, I mean, again, the power of the blitz, guys. The power of the blitz. Every single good defense in Madden history, regardless of game, has been centered around a blitz. There's no different this year. Drag, open, pressure, says we can't throw drag. It's, it's wide open. These routes are open. It's the pressure. It's coming down to can you give yourself time or not? Which I also think is why you see him running a little bit more quicker, developing shorter passing combos. Um, trying to kind of take advantage of that. Got the tight end wheel, throw that, and you see if you ever, and that's why you run that. If you ever, if you ever kind of fall asleep at the wheel defensively, which is what he did there. He had been defending it every single time up until this point, falls asleep at the wheel on a big third down. Abram completes it. That will actually come back again to that uh, later on in this game. A little quick snap, a bunch trail, and a pretty good throwaway there. Showtime pretty much had that taken care of. And I think Showtime is basing out of zone if I want to – this is probably Nickel Dog. I don't think he's doing these adjustments out of mid-blitz. He might be, but I don't think so. I could be wrong just based off the way this corner. He's not – I don't think he's – I don't think he's showing blitz either. He might be doing all this out of mid-blitz. I love this combo. This is probably my favorite. This is probably like – I love that one combo, but this this is seriously – I think this is the best combo in the game. You see Astro do this a lot in his game. It's this right here. I love this because you have to switch stick the corner route. You can't you, – you pretty much have to switch stick the corner route. Once you switch stick the corner route, you really can't get back over here and guard this and this. You also have a seam streak that's kind of your snap throw read. If they give it to you, throw it. So you see here I'm looking, okay, that's not there. Now at this point I'm like, okay, corner route's open. It's a matter of whether he switch sticks. Now notice his user's running here. His user's going to have a really hard time switch sticking from here to here. And you see, I mean, this is open. I don't know why Abram's not throwing that. Well, I just don't see why he's not throwing that. I feel like that's wide open. Instead, we're going to throw this. And that is, this is playing Showtime. This is understanding what Showtime does. When he switch sticks, he almost always comes straight down like this. So he automatically comes down, and Abram is basically just, I think, anticipating that, and then he can just throw this in the back corner. I feel like it was honestly a really bad bad job by Showtime's user because if you switch stick, take this away, this, this, is, a, this is an interception. It's an interception, but I think you know Showtime just kind of came down super hard on that route, and it just it just really didn't um, didn't work out for him. So that's a big touchdown for Abram, and now we're kind of in we're coming down into about a drive left ish for each player, right? Maybe one one drive for each player, and then maybe one additional drive for Abram. Probably two drives left for Abram, one drive left for Showtime, and the question really becomes, what do you do, Showtime? Because you're not probably going to, uh, I don't know what's going on with my screen here. All right, sorry about that. I don't know what was going on with that, but uh, let's get back on the field here. And there's the replay. Let's just skip that. Maybe. Okay, so first and 10, what do you do, Showtime? Let's we'll see what happens first play. Get a send four with contains. Notice Abram is containing a lot, and that kind of, forces Showtime to stay in the pocket when he's he's kind of mixing up between containing and actually sending it. It's a second nine situation combo. You're getting a lot of smash return, a lot of smash return. I actually hate this. Stem that post all the way down. I don't love that. That gets open. And see, it's this is just kind of the chess match a bunch, guys. This is, this is kind of the chess match a bunch. We're going to go into your fourth. Put your fours up, fourth quarter, kind of do or die here for Showtime. Uh, does he does he get seven here or not? It's the biggest play of the game, biggest drive of the game. And we get an instant shed, instant shed. 
And he is throwing. Where is he throwing? He's not throwing. He's just taking a sack. Okay. There you go. Pressure. There's Jeremy Chin. And I don't. I th- I want to say this is. I don't know who this is. I think this is Ken Houston, but I don't know who that is. I want to say that's Ken Houston. Verticals run up. Good. And now we get a third and seven. Biggest down of the game. Biggest biggest position. What do you do? Showtime. It's basically coming down to can you beat man or not beat man. Let's see what he has here. I believe this is Gonzalez and Wiggins, and I don't know who this is. Wiggins might be the slot. Throws that, and good knockout. Yeah, that 27 is Ken Houston. So, you know, honestly, Abram's doing this with relatively – Wiggins is obviously expensive, but but, um, you got Krause out there. I don't know if he's got big play Slay out there, who else he has. These aren't like – Amazing players. Fourth and seven. Ooh, okay. And again, you see another situation. This is Showtime's kind of man beater. It's these stemmed out routes, about 10 to 50. You know, that time it was a smart route, but and I see here on the left side, look at this. If this was a spin, if that was a speed out, that's getting open. So you're seeing these out route routes are really good uh, against man. So if you want to beat man. 10 to 15 yard out routes, 10 to 15 yard in routes, this backwards zig out of smash return, drag routes. Those are really good routes for beating man. We'll see what he does here. First and 10. Sliding right, blocking the running back. Takes another big pressure. That's another pressure from Abram. And you're seeing, you know, I mean, this is just a lot of pressure. And Showtime having to make reads under pressure with good tight man coverage. Has pretty much been the defensive game plan for for Abram. Tight end streak, manned up, boom. Oh, what a play! That's Wiggins, and this is probably shaded inside and underneath. And that's really, honestly, just makes a great play, and he's gonna take that to the house. That's huge. That just that just absolutely changes everything for Showtime in terms of what he needs to do offensively. And really, I think what he needs to do offensively, based off this clock here. You gotta. I think you score. You either have to score really fast, or you have to. This has to be last drive. You don't want to be giving Abram the ball back because he's only going to need a field goal to win the game. That's how this super shifted the game, um, just in terms of of this huge play. And again, it was really just I think shaded down inside man coverage. Goes to a streak there. And that's is that is that Slay? Yeah, that's Slay out there. Okay, that's not Sertan. So we have Wiggins. I would assume this is Slay and this is Gonzalez over here. Yeah, that's Slay. Drag route is just cooking. That drag route is absolutely cooking. Main coverage. First and 10, three minutes. See, now you're kind of in this spot. I think. His goal was to score, and there you see there's that pressure again. Um, I think that's – now you're kind of in the spot because Showtime's goal was to score fast. He got down there, but he didn't really get down there fast enough. Now you still got to kind of score fast. And so now you're really in no man's land because you can't really clock this. But you also put yourself in a position where it's going to be fairly easy for Abram to clock the game. It's actually a decent – it's a decent score there. It gets in there quick. And that's fairly fast. You know, I think he scored in about 30 seconds. But, I mean, still, this is a fairly easy clock. Abram just going to get a couple first downs and the game's over. All right, so we'll see what happens. This is where Showtime is going to be putting everything out there for defense. That was uh, the first time we saw that quarterback sweep, and that might be the last time we see that quarterback sweep called. That did not work. Trevor Lawrence, Worthy, Marvin, I think 12 is Jones, Velas Jones. Notice where Showtime stands and where Abram stands, too, on the blitz, a little different. Block of the running back here. And Showtime screaming. There's the corner out. Very good. All right, here, I mean, you get a standard depth corner. You really don't see this a lot. That beats man. And obviously, you know, situationally, Showtime's got to play a lot more aggressive defensively. You're going to see more hard flags, more man coverage, you know, really trying to get up there and force something. 
um, either get a big sack or, or force a pick. We'll see what um, see what he goes to here. Just the crack toss. Now he wants to snap this once it gets under thirty seconds. This is going to start to put some stress on Showtime's clock management. He's going to have to start using timeouts. You'll see here at the bottom, two twenty four. He decides to call one here. I don't know that I love that timeout call there. I'm kind of curious why he calls it the two minute there. Uh, but situationally now, that does – I think, honestly, situationally, it forces Abram to pat, to run the ball again. Um, I think that might be part of it. So he does have to run again. Now we're in a third and three situation. Now, if I'm showtime, I probably honestly call a timeout there because, it, again, it kind of forces Abram to run the ball. Now that he's able to go down to the two-minute warning, then, you know, basically here – I honestly think you should be throwing this. Abram's going to run the ball with an inside zone. I don't love this call by him, uh, and really that's why. Because now you basically only give yourself one chance to pass, and in this game I don't love – just with the with, with nickel double mug, if, it, if he gets randomly screamed at, this is, this is like now Showtime will basically win the game. So you give yourself one-fourth down for the game. I don't love that. I feel like I'd rather just take a third and five. He is going to have a stemmed curl if he runs man press there. And then he has this – this is this play again that I talked about. So you see here that motion, cheap motion. Look at this tight end. Nobody goes out there. He's not manned up. And then it's GG's basically. So that is that is a kind of a killer for Showtime. I feel like he played really good. Just a couple situations where it just didn't really work out for him. And, um, and that's going to be that pretty much. I think Abram's just going to run the ball. There's a toss. You know, situationally, I don't think showtime. I think you honestly just run the ball kick. In this game, I will say, with switch stick being as good as it is, even though it is a little bit more of an off – even though it is, is a, probably one of the best offensive Maddens we've ever seen, switch stick can really take away the one-play touchdown aspect. And so I don't feel like you get bombed as much in this game as you have – in years past, he is going to throw. Is he going to throw this ball? I think he is going to throw it. He is going to throw this. I don't know what we're th – I don't love the route combo either. He's going to max protect. I think his idea is to take a sack or throw a wide open drag. And you see here, throws that. Oh, almost got it. All right, fourth and inches. So now he has to take his three, and then that's going to give Showtime. Uh, Showtime is going to get a chance basically with like 10 seconds. Now, with the way the runoff is, getting three in, in, in 12 seconds isn't terribly hard. Um, he basically just needs one dot, and he can use the entire field. He just needs it to be – and he needs it to put him in field goal range, uh, which is kind of going to be the challenging aspect. He's going to go to this with the super deep speed out. This deep out, the speed out is huge. Going a corner route, got the cheap motion. And speed out and good switch stick, and that's going to take that away. GG's, thanks for watching, boys. If you guys want to check out my ebooks on all this stuff, it's in the school site, school.com slash Cody Ballard. But Abram advances. Showtime looks good in his first performance, but doesn't get the W.